This video is an explanation of the new free return trajectory planning that's available in Gravity Engine 9.3. This replaces the free return trajectory planning from earlier releases, which was very much a kind of adjust parameters, hit and miss, and try and get the approach to the moon that you wanted. This is more algorithmic and actually does some uh, searching of the solution space and finds a velocity that achieves a requested paraloon and then also shows you the return path to Earth and what kind of free return path you would end up if you picked that. The location is the same. We're in scenes, mini games, scenes free return. We have several flavors here. Uh, first and foremost, since we want to actually model the Earth-Moon system. There are some scenes in orbital units with the correct masses of the Moon and the Earth with the assumption that the Moon's in a circular orbit. Uh, and then there are versions that work in a dimensionless context if uh, that's more appropriate for the game you're working on. So let's go ahead and deal with the Earth to Moon and free return scenario. We have two versions which are largely so I can make sure that they work in both modes. Uh, but let's use the mode where orbital planes are in the XZ plane, so that's patch conic to moon XZ. So there's more going on in this scene than the previous free return scene, and uh, there are some input parameters that we need to understand. So we'll break down the elements in the scene in a second, but first let's just go ahead and hit play and see what you get. So what you get are some plots where we're working in the frame where the moon is uh, not moving relative to the Earth, so the co-rotating frame. We have a dark blue path which shows us the outbound path to the moon, a light green hyperbola that shoots around the moon, and then we have a light blue return path to the Earth. Uh, and there's a slight shift here because in actuality, uh, as the moon as the ship slingshots around the moon, the, move, the moon moves up and the actual point where it exits the moon's sphere of influence is uh, a little bit different. We have also an inset graph which is uh, helping visualize the choices that are being made to achieve the target paraloon. And you can see in the fine text in the path here that there is a target paraloon specified and then it shows us the velocity that it has chosen to achieve that target paraloon. Now the input parameters to this calculation are probably best understood by referring to the web documentation. So let's go ahead and click this web documentation link. So that takes us to the Enbody physics page that explains this. And I have here a picture from the very uh, reasonably priced and pretty good uh, textbook Fundamentals of Astrodynamics that explains in some detail how all these calculations work. And so this diagram helps understand some of the uh, input parameters to the calculation. The way this calculation works is it decides that at the time the ship enters the moon's sphere of influence, there is a particular point on the sphere of influence that the ship should be at. And that is designated by this angle lambda 1, which shows us where the entry point to the SOI should be. The initial orbit of the ship is uh, given by a radius of r naught, so that's also an input parameter. And then the other parameters that we have are the velocity we're going to use to launch towards the moon and this angle phi naught, which is the flight path angle, or if you like, the deviation uh, above the local horizon at the circular orbit uh, for that velocity. Now this is assuming a couple of things. It's assuming that the Earth is fixed. It's assuming the Moon moves in a circular orbit. And it's assuming we use a patched conic model where up until the Moon's sphere of influence, we're only using the gravity from the Earth. And after that, when we're in the Moon's sphere of influence, we're only using the gravity from the Moon. So as it summarizes down at the bottom here, the input conditions are R-naught, V-naught, Phi-naught, and Lambda-naught. 
And that's for one pass through the calculation. And what the controller does in our gravity engine scene is it does a bunch of passes through the calculation and determines once you get to this particular point what the velocity is at the entrance to the moon's sphere of influence. And at that point, if you move those numbers into the moon's sphere of influence, you can determine the orbit around the moon and you can determine how close to the moon you will come. So what you're seeing on this graph, as the title says, is given a particular velocity along the horizontal axis, what paraloon do we achieve? And this shows a kind of uh, graph that dips down and then up, and then the red line is a target paraloon that's been set uh, by entering a number in one of the inspector elements for the controller, and we'll show you that in a minute. So notice that there are actually two velocities that would work. The red line intersects this curve in two places. And so there is actually a key you can use to flip between the two routes. If you press the R key, then that will change from taking the second route to the first route. And if we do that in this case, you see that taking the other solution results in uh, a trajectory that won't even orbit the Earth anymore. You'll end up being flung out into space. The other things you can do with the keys is you can adjust the SOI entry angle, lambda, or the flight path angle for velocity v by using the keys shown. So you could, if you use i, you can change the angle that you enter the moon, you go back. And in each case, it will find a velocity that gives you the target paraloon. What you won't necessarily get is the free return Earth perigee that you want. Typically, you want to be you know, entering the upper atmosphere in your return orbit so that you're guaranteed a re-entry. So with a radius of the Earth of around you know, 6,370 kilometers, this is 6411. You could fine tune that a little bit by adjusting the flight path angle if you want. So let's stop this and look at some of the components in the scene. So if we look in the hierarchy here, we have a compute TLI component and we have a compute TLI controller and this is the workhorse of the scene. This has references to the ship, the Earth and the Moon and here is where you set your desired paraloon. So here's your target paraloon of uh, 1876. So the radius of the Moon is 1737 so this is you know a little little more than a hundred kilometers above the surface of the moon uh, and through a little bit of uh, tuning I've decided that I like a lambda one of 41.33 as my initial value but you can change the initial values for phi and lambda as the scene runs you're welcome to adjust them with keystrokes uh, you can determine whether you use the second route or the first route the first point where the curve crosses the red line or the second mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of information which are uh, orbit predictors that are not associated with end bodies. And you can just set the position and velocity and these are a very handy way of visualizing the different orbits of the different segments of the patch conic. And then there's also a reference to a planning camera which is what gives us that uh, inset window with the graph and then a line plot component I've created which is a fairly quick and dirty draw a couple of curves using line renderers on the screen uh, piece of code. There's certainly much more one could do with that bells and whistle wise if you wanted to. So that's the compute TLI component. It has the predictors underneath. This is a departure from the way it was done in previous versions of Gravity Engine where uh, we added ghost ships and gave those ghost ships positions and velocities in order to end up with orbit predictions. Uh, this new approach is much lighter and much simpler and you don't add anything extra to Gravity Engine. Now it's one thing to plan the trajectory. It would also be a good thing if you can actually execute the trajectory and that's what the perform TLI component does. It takes a reference to the compute TLI controller so that it can get the values required and most importantly it maps them from the kind of nice picture where the moon is positioned horizontally on the uh, on the screen into the current position taking into account the current phase of the moon the current position of the ship 
determines the maneuver timing to when the TEI burn should occur, and then determines the timing to flip the orbit predictors over to the moon when the sphere of influence of the moon is reached. So let's take a look at how that looks, and in fact we'll turn off Maximize so we can see just how well the algorithm actually does. So we'll go ahead and press play. So we have the same plot before, so we're targeting a paraloon of 1876, and we're expecting a free return of 6411. And we can press X to execute the maneuver. So our planning scenes go away, and if we now press, for example, 6 to speed up time a little bit, we can see the outbound orbit takes place, and it's been oriented in a direction so that we will get to the correct angle with respect to the Earth-Moon line at the time the Moon has moved around into position. So let's hit 7 to make things go a little faster. We'll hit F2 to change our camera to zoom in on the ship. And actually we can go up to 8, so we'll go to a thousand times speed. And if we go over here on the inspector and look at the spaceship and open it up and look at its transfer orbit, which is the orbit predictor, then once we hit the SOI, we'll just slow, slow time down a little bit here, you can see that the actually achieved periapsis is 1874.4 compared to our target of 1876. So that's pretty good. Now let's carry on. So we'll come around, we'll shoot out, slow life down again a little bit, and we can see that our Earth perigee is going to be 6411, which is bang on the money, that's what our trajectory predicted. So this is much improved over the previous generations, you have very good reproducibility. And we'll just stop that there. There is one other element in this scene called free return correction, which allows you to, on the outbound course, if you see the, the text here in the expector, it says press M for correction. So on your flight out to the moon, it will recompute the actual paraloon you will achieve. So in our case, we were off by about two kilometers. Uh, and if you press M, it will perform a calculation and adjustment to dial that back in as accurately as it possibly can. So let's give that a shot. So let's go ahead and press X and restart. Dial up the speed a bit. And we'll get, say, about halfway to the moon. Go a little faster. Slow things down. Now we'll go ahead and press M, which will change our, if you look in the logging, you can see that we did a very slight adjustment down at the level of kind of 10 to the minus six of our current velocity. So we'll now go ahead and dial up our speed and see if we look at the spaceship's orbit once we get into the lunar sphere. Just hit two and slow things down here a bit. We can see that our periapsis is now 1876.6, uh, which if we look at what we were aiming for, 1876.7 is pretty bang on. So that mid-course correction, even at the level of a kind of 10 to the minus five, 10 to the minus six velocity change, did dial us in really nicely. So let's jump over to the how to get back. So that's something in the scene patched conic from moon XED. And here we have conceptually fairly similar idea. If we go back to the documentation and take a look at the picture a little further down for the return, we have a similar idea where we're designating the point on the moon's sphere of influence where we want to leave the moon, and then we're going to determine the resulting orbit around the Earth, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to specify the earth perigee that we want to obtain, given again uh, an angle lambda 1, uh, an r naught, and a v naught, as well as a flight path angle. So the, the input parameters are conceptually fairly similar. When we go back to the scene and run the scene, first of all, actually, let's go over to compute TEI. So here I'm targeting a perigee of 6,400, which would be about 30 kilometers above the Earth. It might be a little closer than you'd want to actually be. And I've got a preliminary value of lambda 1, 48 degrees, and no uh, flight path angle will just burn directly along the circular orbit. So we go ahead and press play. So interestingly, the shape of the curve is a little bit different. That's just the way the dynamics work out. And we show the path where we leave. And once again, you can change that angle with uh, keys and adjust uh, phi and so forth. And again, there is also a correction factor. So if we go back to our 48 degrees, we get, interestingly, we can't dial in. It, it's a very initially sensitive problem. So uh, I've requested 6400 Earth perigee, and what it's actually able to give me is 6370. And I can't often do much better than that in this case. So in this case, making use of the return course correction is going to be quite important. So we'll just go ahead and press uh, X to execute the maneuver. We'll press 7 to speed things up a bit. There goes our burn. Leaving the moon's sphere of influence. Turn ourselves up to 8. Dial ourselves down to a speed of 5x. So let's have a look at the ship's orbit over here. Earth, spaceship, transfer orbit. So the actual periapsis we're going to get, even though we requested 6400, is going to be more like 7000. Again, because it's a very sensitive to initial conditions. So we really want to take advantage of the component return course correction. So we press, in this case, C to correct the return course. So our goal is to get back to a 6400 perigee. Uh, and the way this return course correction works, it only adjusts the perigee, so it changes the angle of the burn so that the orientation of the ellipse doesn't change and the perigee point over the surface of the Earth doesn't change, only its altitude does. So we'll go ahead and we look at the transfer orbit. We have a periapsis of 7226. We go ahead and press C. And the mid-course correction has been applied. If we look in the console, we can see the details of what the new velocity is. And we can see that we have now dialed in the periapsis we want within kind of 0.06 of a kilometer. And we're now back on path to re-enter the atmosphere where we want. Thanks for watching through this. Please have a look at the documentation. Uh, I'm always happy to uh, answer questions about the details and uh, talk through how some of the code works. Hope that you find this useful. I think it's a big improvement over what came before.